This is the Turkish flag, but did you know that once upon a time the Turkish flag looked pretty similar but kind of different? Well, welcome back to why did the flag change and today we're going to look at the flag of Turkey, called in Turkish the Türk Bayragi, or sometimes known simply as Al Bayrak, which is just the red flag, or sometimes as Al Sanjak, which is simply the red banner. So where does this flag come from? What is the symbolism behind it? And what happened to the older version of this flag? Well, to look at that, we need to look back at the history of Turkey and the forerunner to the modern Turkish state, which was the Ottoman Empire. Now, the Ottoman Empire spread out through much of Mesopotamia into the Balkans and parts of Eastern Europe, as well as across into Arabia and parts of North Africa too. In its early days, the Turks were famous nomadic horsemen coming from Central Asia, and so they didn't really use flags, but rather used more like banners that could be used from horseback, and these were called Ugh. Now we can see in this image from 1574 depicting Ottoman horsemen that certain red flags were already in use by this time. Many early Ottoman flags showed a Zulfikar, which is a kind of scimitar or sword. And as we can see on these examples from the very early 17th century and one from the 16th century, we also see that the color red is very important as well as the crescent moon being displayed. It's in the reign of Selim I, who ruled from between 1512 and around 1520 that we first start to hear about different colors being associated with different units. The army having a red banner while the Sultan himself had a white banner. Slightly later in the 16th century, we hear that the Janissaries, so the elite personal troops of the Sultan, fought under a white banner while the cavalry fought under a red banner. So clearly the colors of white and red were incredibly important in the Ottoman Empire around this time. And so it makes sense that these would later appear on the Ottoman and the Turkish flag themselves. It's said that the crescent moon design came in 1453 with the conquest of Constantinople by Ottoman forces of Mehmet the Great. And it's said that this may actually originally have been a Byzantine symbol, as it appears on some coins from the Byzantine Empire from the 4th century. But it's not exactly clear if this was the only point of origin of this symbol. Many Turkish historians claim that it was used by Central Asian tribesmen and so that it has a non-Christian origin, but there are several theories behind where it ultimately comes from. Another important colour, of course, is green, which is important throughout Islam and the Muslim Muslim world and which was often worn by various sultans and appeared on various flags too. Now there were many flags being used by the Ottoman armed forces, by the navy and indeed by civil society and the sultans themselves throughout much of the renaissance period. Here we can see a star with a crescent moon in the colours of red and green. Slightly later on we have a few flags that incorporated various shades of blue and purple with crescent moons but without stars stars as we can see here. But finally in 1793 there was a decree which said that all of the merchant ships of the Ottoman navy had to fly the same flag. This is around a time when other European nations were also imposing similar laws for merchant vessels having the same ensigns so that they could be identified with the countries from which they came. And for the Ottomans this would be a red flag with a white crescent moon and an eight-pointed star on it. A little bit more about the number of points on the star in just a second. Now, in 1844, this became the official flag of the Ottoman Empire as a part of the Tanzimat reforms within the Ottoman Empire, which tried to make it more Western and more similar to the various European nations as the Ottomans were trying and failing to keep up with European advancements and European courtly culture. It was around this time that a distinction was made between the colour on flags, so that the green colour would be reserved for religious authorities and religious flags, while red became the colour of secular flags and secular authority. And we can see in various European books of flags at the time that variously the Ottoman flag was portrayed either with an eight-pointed star, sometimes with a five-pointed star, and at times also with a six-pointed star. So the number of points on the star had not been adequately decided upon at this point.
The distinction between religious and secular can be seen on the 1882 adopted coat of arms of the Ottoman Empire, where we see both a red flag with a crescent moon and stars and a green flag with the crescent moon and stars, reflecting the fact that the caliph was both a secular and a religious leader within the Ottoman Empire for the Muslims under its control. In 1887, with the onset uh, of the Russo-Turkish War, we see that the crescent moon is fast becoming a symbol that is associated in the West with Islam as a whole, with the religion as a whole, rather than just with the Ottoman Empire. And this is probably because of contact with the Ottomans as the Muslims that were nearest to Europeans and indeed that they had the most diplomatic dealings with, at least in the Mediterranean. And so it's around this time when they were fighting against the Russians and Bulgarians and several other peoples in the Balkans that we get the Red Crescent being the equivalent to the Red Cross, as the Red Crescent or the Crescent in general was being associated with Islam as a whole by the West and so the organization. I think it's officially adopted several decades later. Now we can see also in this picture from 1910 the different standards being used by the Turkish armed forces, which at this point basically all incorporate a red background and the white crescent moon and the star that's being used. And this was the banner that was being used by the Turks during the First World War as well. Obviously that conflict did not end well for the Ottoman Empire as it was carved up and the Sultan was abolished after it had fallen. And so in 1923, the Republic of Turkey is officially founded and it takes as its flag the last flag of the Ottoman Empire as it sees itself as the successor to the Ottoman Empire. Some small changes were made to the flag in 1936, which justified the position of the moon, how thick it should be and the number of points on the star to five. And that gives us the modern Turkish flag. And as we can see, this is clearly inspired by the old Ottoman flag. And what's interesting is that the Ottoman flag inspired several flags of successor nations to the Ottoman Empire, particularly in North Africa. So we can see there the flags of Algeria, Libya and Tunisia, which all have the crescent moon and star, just as the old Ottoman flag did. And interestingly, all of them have gone for five points upon the star rather than any other numbers. There are many flags around the world, particularly Muslim nations, which incorporate a crescent moon and many also which incorporate a crescent moon and star because of its connection to Islam. Not all of them were a part of the Ottoman Empire, of course. Anyway, that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching this video about what happened to the old Turkish flag. I suppose in brackets it should say, well, it was the old Ottoman flag, the Ottoman Empire fell, Turkey came in its place, and there was disagreement about the number of stars that were on the flag to begin with. Anyway, let me know if you found this video interesting. I have a few more videos that I'd like to make about various flags from around the world and how they have changed over time. I think looking at a lot of colonial flags will be a very similar story that once they were a colony, then they were no longer a colony and so they chose their own flag. But I always find it interesting to look back into the past for what actually inspired these symbols and why different people feel either represented or not represented by certain symbols that appear on flags and how these are chosen. Anyway, in the meantime, I have been Hilbert and this has been The History. Comment on any videos you'd like to see below and I will see you next time.